This channel has reached 100 subscribers, and to celebrate this moment, I challenged myself to make something ambitious today. So after thinking for a while, I finally found what I'm gonna make, Pac-Man. There are many things we need to do to make Pac-Man, so let's get started. As usual, we start this project by declaring some constants, and by creating a window. That wasn't so hard. Since Pac-Man has a specific map, we have to store that map somewhere in our code. We're gonna store it as text, so I made a new vector. Wait, 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 hold on, are you still using vectors? Well, I was thinking maybe I could just, uh, well, uh, um, I, um, okay, fine, I won't use them. Instead, we're gonna use a race. Our goal is to turn this face into a map. Let's do it. I made a new function that will look through our sketch and turn each character into a cell. Then we're gonna use another function to draw the map itself. Let's see. Yeah, that doesn't look like a face at all. Now we're talking. It's time we make Pac-Man. I made a class for Pac-Man called Pac-Man. We're not gonna worry about graphics for now, so we'll draw him as a yellow circle. And our convert sketch function will set its position based on the character in our sketch. Okay, we have a yellow circle. Now let's add some movement to it. I made a new variable that will store the current direction Pac-Man is facing, and we're gonna move him in that direction after each frame. I also realized that I wrote unsigned unsigned, so let's fix that as well. Alright, he's moving. Let's make sure we can control him. You are now under my command. Okay, now we're gonna add collision checking. We're gonna check every direction to see whether or not there are walls there. Let's see how it works. Nope, that's not how collisions work. Okay, I think I fixed it. Nope, it just got worse. You know what? Screw this. Let's think for a moment. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Since Pac-Man completely ignores the grid, we can't check cells like this. So instead, I'm planning to check cells that Pac-Man is currently intersecting. Here's the function which does exactly that. And it's finally working! Now that we've done with the collision checking, we can change our map to the Pac-Man map. Let's do it! And that's how it's done. As you probably noticed, there are two tunnels on the map through which Pac-Man can simply leave the map. These tunnels are actually war tunnels where you enter from one side and exit from the other. Let's add that into the game. Let's see. Oh yeah. This is weirdly satisfying. I'm kinda hungry. Let's add pellets. We just need to add some dots to our sketch. And we're gonna draw these dots as small circles. Beautiful. There's no point in having pellets if we can't eat them. So let's change that. We just need to make a small change in the wall collision function. There we go. Mmm, delicious. Now we can move on to the next step, which is... Okay, we have a new class for ghosts. Now we need to somehow draw them. I took a circle and a rectangle. Put them together and oh my god, is that a real ghost? Okay, we have a ghost. Let's give it some brains. I found this amazing website which explains the behavior of each ghost. And we're gonna use it. A couple of things you need to know. First, ghosts can't turn back, unless they really have to. Second, each ghost has its own target, and they follow that target by making different turns at the intersections. I took the update function from the Pac-Man class and slightly changed it. For now, it's gonna turn randomly. Okay, it's so wait, 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 that's my food! No more eating for you, mister. Now that we've done with the basics, let's write the behavior for the ghosts. In other words, artificial intelligence. Basically, ghosts will have two modes, the scatter mode and the chase mode. During the scatter mode, they're gonna target the corner they're assigned to. And during the chase mode, they're gonna chase Pac-Man in their own way. The red ghost will simply target Pac-Man. The orange ghost will target Pac-Man too. But once it gets close to him, it'll switch to the scatter mode. The pink ghost will count 4 cells in front of Pac-Man and target the 4th one. The blue ghost will count 2 cells in front of Pac-Man. Then it's gonna draw a vector from the red ghost to the 2nd cell. After that, it's gonna double that vector and target the cell it'll point to. Damn, Blue! Why do you have to be so complicated? Okay, here's the red ghost chasing Pac-Man. This is not challenging enough, so let's add the others. I made a new class called Ghost Manager which will manage the ghosts. And I also wrote targets for each ghost. Let's see. Um, you could use the door, you know? Okay, I think I fixed it. Let's try again. They really don't want to use the door, huh? What's happening is that they're choosing this cell over this one because it's closer to their target. To fix this, we just need to set their initial target to be the exit from their house. And we'll forbid them to use the door as soon as they reach the exit. Okay, they finally left their house. That means it's time for us to... The first thing we're gonna add is wave attacks. I made a timer for the waves and when it runs out, we'll switch the mode for each ghost. Then we'll restart the timer. Alright, they're scattering. And now they're chasing us. So it's working. Next, you may have noticed that we have 4 empty cells in our map. 
we're supposed to put energizers in those places. So let's do that. First we're gonna add energizers to the map sketch. Then we're gonna make them edible, like pellets. As soon as Pac-Man eats the energizer, we'll start the timer. And while the timer is on, Ghost will move slowly and randomly. Let's see if it works. Oh, you think you can catch me? You think you can beat me up? Boom! Didn't expect that, did ya? Now let's make sure the player can lose or win the game. We're gonna start with losing. I made a new function which will check whether or not Pac-Man touched the ghost. And we're gonna stop drawing everything except Pac-Man when that function returns true. Let's see what happens if we touch a ghost. Impressive! Now we're gonna give Pac-Man the ability to scare away the ghost after he eats the Energizer. When Pac-Man touches a ghost while being energized, we'll set the ghost target to be his home. We'll also increase its speed. Boo. Oh yeah, they still can't use the door. Let's try again. I know where you live. It's working. Now we're gonna add a winning condition. We're gonna check how many pellets are left in the map. And if the number is zero, we'll show a slightly different game over screen. We're also gonna increase the difficulty. Alright, let's win this game. Almost. Almost. Yay! Now that we've finished the game, it's time to... We're gonna start with the map, and already do the texture. For the walls, we'll check the four neighboring cells to see whether or not they have walls. Then we're gonna draw the wall accordingly. Alright, this is starting to look good. Now we're gonna draw the ghosts. Here are the faces and the animation. Let's put them in the game. I made a new variable called animation timer. And we're gonna use it for body animation. Then we're gonna update it. We're also gonna use the current direction of the ghost to draw the face. And now they're looking a lot better. I also made them flash when they're about to turn back. Now let's draw Pac-Man. You have no idea how much time I spent animating this. Alright, we're almost done. Let me show you how I improved the game over screen. Pretty good, huh? The last thing we need to do is to add text. Here and here. Boom! We've officially finished this game. As always, the code is in the description. Thank you for 100 subscribers. This is our first and definitely not the last milestone. So be sure to like and subscribe. And by the way, 